Ladies and gentlemen, I'm DJ Just J at the AFC. The AFC means we advocate for children first. And what I want people to understand is I think I've had a little bit of difficulty getting my message through to people because I notice a lot of people are still attacking me in the comment sections. They are sending wild e There you go. I got you. I got you, Kingdom Minded. Let me hook you up there. Hold on, hold on. Got to do this real quick. But I, I'm really, really, like, I really don't think my message is that hard to understand. When I say we advocate for children first, what that means is that you guys got to stop coming into my comment section, emailing me, talking about, well, the mom or, well, the dad or, well, the auntie or, well, the, the stepmom. We advocate for children first. Why aren't people putting children first? That's what I believe is the problem in our society is the fact that we believe in protecting grown adults and we're not protecting our babies. They are the last on our list. And it just seems like we're, we're, we're in a losing fight. And I think it really, really sucks. But... I, I'm thankful for the people who do get it, but I know that there are a lot of people out there that clearly don't understand what we're trying to do, okay? But nonetheless, this particular story comes out of Chicago, and we, we've been trying to advocate as best as we can to get people to change their mind and change their thoughts out of Chicago. And I want to give a shout out to Brother Early Walker, if he is out there listening, but we brought him on for an interview. He is actually a person who was making real change out there in Chicago, and I want to shout him out. I want to actually give him credit for this. I don't know that he had anything to do with this, but there was a young girl that was seven years old that was shot, and she is among many children in Chicago that met their demise at the hands of random bullets. In some cases, the parents were actually the targets. In this particular baby's case, is really, really sad. This little girl's name is, they have it written as Natalia Wallace, but I think her name is Natalie. From what I understood from the video, the mom messed up on her birth certificate and there was an A instead of an E at the very end of her name. So I think it's Natalie Wallace, but they spell it as Natalia. But bail was denied Tuesday for a man accused of shuttling, or excuse me, yeah, shuttling gunmen from the West Side Block after a seven-year-old girl was fatally shot during a violent July 4th holiday. Okay, now this is a different child than what we spoke of before. But there were a number of kids, so it seems like we're, we're talking about the majority of them, okay? There is an individual that was caught. Let me get his ugly face up on this screen, because I want to slap the crap out of him. This guy right here, his name is Reginald Merrill, R-E-G-I-N-A-L-D, Merrill, M-E-R-R-I-L-L. -L. He is 33 years old. He's very close to my age. This is the guy who drove the people who did the shooting that caused this baby to lose her life. And I'm going to tell y'all how I feel about that before we even get real deep into this story. In my opinion, I know the law is a little different, but in my opinion, if you help people do these heinous crimes, then to me, if you're not going to tell, you saw something, you ain't going to say nothing. Then in my opinion, you should have to suffer for what those fools went and did. That baby lost her life, and what happened to her was not fair at all. All right? That's how I feel about it. So if they throw the book at him and he don't want to talk, then so be it. Okay? Reginald Merrill, 33 years old, of the 5600 block of West Washington Boulevard, was charged with first-degree murder and aggravated battery in the death of that little seven-year-old baby. Again, her name is Natalie Wallace, but they have it as Natalia Wallace. He was alleged to be the the, uh, the getaway driver and authorities say they were looking for three other suspects in that car. They got one out of four. Looking for three more individuals. He knows who they are, but you know they got this no snitch policy that I think that these thugs really need to do away with because if, in my opinion, if you cannot stand up to the heat of judgment, then I don't think you should be doing the stuff that you're doing, okay? Now, he was taken into custody a little more than a matter of hours ago when the story was released, and police said that driving a car matching the description of the one used in the shooting was how they caught him, which also injured another person. Now, Natalie, who was a resident of Chatham on the south side, was on the sidewalk just after 7 p.m. Saturday in the 100 block of North Latrobe Avenue when a vehicle pulled up and these idiots got out of the car and started shooting towards where this baby was. So clearly this baby was not the target. 
Let me throw something else out there that might piss some people off. Whoever the target was, which is probably the man that got shot, I think he also should face charges. You know why? Because there's clearly something that he knows why he was the target. And I think that we need to go just a little bit harder. Even if those people are considered to be quote unquote victims legally, I think they need to start charging them as well. Cause this whole cycle has got to stop. Cause it's just a revolving door. Okay. Now the judge by the name of Mary Marubio denied bail. She denied this fool's bail saying that there was strong circumstantial, there's a strong cir circumstantial case against them. I'm sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. Now, Reginald Merrill allegedly was behind the wheel of the white 2016 Subaru legacy that was captured on video. Thank God for video at the scene of the shooting. Three men could be seen getting out of the car. Let me throw, let me throw something else out there real quick. <laughs> this is gonna piss y'all off too. People always try to tell me, Judge Jay, you got your facts wrong. Yous don't know what you's talking about. You wasn't there. You don't know what actually happened. These boys was good boys. They was on their ways to college and they just graduated and blah, 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 right? That's what they generally say, right? But thank goodness for video evidence that is indisputable and the fact that when people have video evidence, they still try to lie and say, like, like they were shaggy. It wasn't me, right? They were seen on video getting out of the car with handguns and they opened fire at a 32 year old man walking on the trove. Now here's the kicker. Are y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for DJ Just J to put his coon tap dancing shoes on? Y'all ready for me to tap dance for the white man? Y'all ready for this? The vehicle that they did the drive-by in is registered to Reginald Merrill's girlfriend. Let me let that sink in for a moment. I'm gonna take a pause for the cause and remind people, please click that thumbs up. It'll help share the stream and let other people know that we're alive. I need about a thousand people in the building tonight. So I need everybody to pitch in and just click that thumbs up. I'm gonna say that again. I'm gonna say that again. The car was registered to this thug's girlfriend. Registered to his girlfriend. So what exactly does that mean? That means that she knows that she has a dude who ain't shit. This dude don't have a job. He don't have a future. He out thugging in the streets, getting his getting his thug on, right? Hashtag, when you date thugs, you date death, right? That's an AFC hashtag. That's our hashtag. When you date thugs, you date death. And this is what happens. So in my opinion, the other person that should also be held accountable in this case is the person who provided the car that they drove in. Huh? Heller, am I saying arrest the girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, I am saying that. Yeah, I'm saying that. Why? Why would I say that? Because clearly this woman has a means to be able to provide a vehicle for herself and what she did and her actions and her dating choices and who she decided to sleep with ended up costing a baby her life. Now, if y'all going to really advocate for children, then you need to start at the root. And if these men are being incentivized by way of sleeping with these chicks, then you need to also take their incentives away. In my opinion, that also is another solution that maybe some of y'all don't like. All right. Now, let's keep going. Baby M Natalia or Natalie was playing on the parkway with several children. Let me throw that out there again. This baby was outside playing with several children at around 7 p.m. in Chicago on the south side. In front of her grandparents' home when the shooting erupted. And the baby was struck once in the head. Let me show y'all this beautiful baby's face. Right here. Why did this baby need to die? This was senseless and it's stupid. 
All of the shooting and all of the murdering, I don't care if it's gang related, I don't care what the reason for it is. It's all dumb. There is no excuse for it. And, and I'm sorry, but if, if they feel like that uh, that this is just gonna be a perpetual cycle, it's just gonna keep going, then I think that they need to just get rid of all the thugs, all the gang bangers, all the dope boys, all of them, get rid of all of them, throw them all away, in my opinion. Cause you gotta stop it at some point. Now the shooting appeared to be a retaliation like I just said, the shooting was a retaliation for a June 29th shooting that left the brother of one of the three gunmen dead. You know what that means to me? If it was the shooting, a retaliation shooting of a brother then what that means is that they should know who one of the other shooters is. Why can't they get a warrant for him? Why can't they put his picture out there and at least say that he's a person of interest? Eight out of 10 murders in Chicago go unsolved. Eight out of 10, 80%. That literally means they're not making a good enough effort to put these people behind bars. And to me, that's simple. That's simple math. If this is a retaliatory strike, you know what it was that you could call it a retaliation and it left the brother of one of the three gunmen dead, then to me, that means you know who it was. Let's move on. Reginald Merrill and the gunmen are believed to be members of the Too Risky Gang who believe the killer they sought was from Latrobe. Assistant State Attorney Kevin Dabani told the judge. Detectives also located high quality video from the block that showed the faces of all three shooters. How about that? So the people aren't gonna tell, but the cameras are gonna tell. So I'm thankful that they got cameras apparently. Now, Reginald Merrill's attorney, Nick Burris, argued that even if his client were the driver, there's no proof that he knew what was going to happen. And again, that's a good argument for from an attorney, but here's where you're gonna fail. Whenever you have a law that says that if you are in collusion, if you were the driver, then we're gonna charge you all with murder if somebody dies. And I think that's a fair rule, especially when you're gonna come up with stupid excuses like he didn't know what was gonna happen. But let's move on. The judge countered that the gunman exited the vehicle fully armed and that the state law holds accomplices and getaway drivers as being legally culpable. Ain't that something? It's awesome. I'm glad. Now, Wallace acting for the getaway driver for three gunmen after the shooting, Mar Marubio said, showed some circumstantial evidence of knowledge of what was going to go down and what was happening. And that's good. And he also has a court date coming up here on July 27th, which is in three weeks. He's got a court date coming up July 27th. Now court records also show that he has seven felony convictions. Is this mic working? Can y'all hear me? Hello, AFC, can y'all hear me? I'm gonna read that again, let's rewind. Court records show that the man by the name of Reginald Merrill has not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven felony convictions not misdemeanors, seven felony convictions. Tell me this, I'm gonna try to mind my mouth tonight. Usa, usa. Tell me this dude is not a thug. Yeah, anybody want to argue that he's not a thug and he was a good boy and he didn't know what he was doing and he didn't know what he was getting into? But yeah, Just Jay is the problem, no. My platform needs to be shut down. My voice needs to be shut down. I'm the problem. Even though I don't have any felony, con any felony convictions, let alone seven. Six of his 
convictions are drug related. His one violent felony came in 2008 when he pleaded guilty to aggravated battery to a police officer and was sentenced to four years in prison. So if this dude has been in that much trouble with the law, you mean to tell me his girlfriend didn't know what he was doing? So if his girlfriend knew what he was doing, then why shouldn't she be held accountable for providing this dude who probably shouldn't have been in a car, probably shouldn't have been driving a car, shouldn't have been a getaway driver, probably shouldn't have a driver's license, but she allowed him to be able to do that knowing that this dude should not have been driving. Why should the girlfriend not be held accountable also? So therefore you should have not only this dude, the getaway driver, but the three men who they saw their faces, get them arrested and arrest the girlfriend. How about that? Get everybody. Following the hearing, Natalie or Natalia's father by the name of Nathan Wallace, and thank God there was a father in this story. The father, Nathan Wallace, said in a press release that he was pleased to hear of the judge's ruling but he will not rest until the other shooters are brought to justice. Right on, Dad. He said things are headed in the right direction and he knows it's a long road, but he's gonna be there every step of the way. It's just more senseless killing and it's heartbreaking. I don't understand anyone who would see kids and still take it upon themselves to shoot. Now this baby was supposed to start second grade at a place called Crown Community Academy of Fine Arts and after her killing, the school released the statement. So I'm going to read this and I'm going to show you guys the video. Natalie, or they say Natalia, but Natalie was a very sweet girl and she was very quiet. She completed every assignment during class, got along with her, with her peers, and colored the most precious pictures ever given to me. Natalie never hesitated to ask for clarity when needed. Sometimes her quiet spirit gave her the strength to lead the, the reading lessons within her group. And she soared when it came to doing math. During her e-learning, Natalie was always present and participating. And at the end of, of each class session, she would type in the chat box, I love you. That is a sweet baby, man. And that is so freaking sad that we lost the soul like that. Let me give you guys the fair usage and let me show you guys the news videos. While y'all are here, please click that thumbs up. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. All right, let's get it. Yeah, so Robert, we learned about those charges yesterday. A West Side man now charged with murder, the murder of a seven year old girl who was shot to death on the 4th of July. But this case is far from over. Detectives still have some work to do because they have to catch up with this man's three accomplices. Now, 33 year old Reginald Merrill, he is now charged with first degree murder and the death of seven year old Natalie Wallace. Natalie was shot and killed on the 4th as she played outside at a family barbecue in the 100 block of North Latrobe in Austin. Now, the little girl was hit in the forehead. Police say Merrill was the driver of a white vehicle which had several men inside. That vehicle pulled up to the home in front of where Natalie was playing. Those men hopped out and opened fire. Her grandmother says the seven-year-old had only been outside just a few minutes before she was hit by gunfire. A 32-year-old man was also shot. Police managed to track that white vehicle and they found Merrill inside. The West Sider was brought in for questioning and charged. Also hit with aggravated battery for discharging a firearm. Police say this shooting was gang related in retaliation for another shooting from several weeks ago. And Natalie was an unintended target. We've been in touch with Natalie's parents since those charges came down and they want the other men to be arrested in charge. Her mother just arrived here minutes ago by bus from Memphis on Greyhound. And she tells me she plans to take her other three children back with her out of Chicago because it's just not safe here. I'm feeling all um, happy and sad at the same time because my daughter is gone. They should be turning themselves in and everybody in the community should be, should be walking them in there. So Merrill is due in bond court later on this afternoon. Reporting live, Courtney Hoosman, WGN News. Just to let you guys know, these are 
four children, including this baby that we're talking about in the focus of this story, and they are all out of Chicago, and all of these kids' lives matter. But I will tell you one thing that is uh, promising to me is now I'm starting to hear the people that actually live in that area, and what they are saying is that Black Lives Matter have to matter to us. Black Lives Matter have to matter to us. We can't just go focus on Ahmaud Aubrey and then focus on George Floyd and then focus on whoever else. Focus on five people when you've got 105 that are dying by the hands of people who look just like us. It's absolutely insane that we worry about one or two people and just be like, all right, well, let's just screw those 13,000 that's dead at the hands of somebody that looks just like us. It doesn't make any logical sense. It never has, but I can at least give kudos to the people out there in Chicago for recognizing that, stepping up, speaking out, seeing something and saying something. You guys got to do better out there. We all got to do better in our own communities, in our own ways, but it just seems like Chicago has a lot more work cut out for them than a lot of us around the world. But nonetheless, this baby couldn't speak for herself, nor could she defend herself. And she was a prisoner in her own home in the city and block that she lived in. And it's a shame that you got people like this out there in the world that they act emotional. And I always told you guys that I believe that a lot of these men do not value other lives because they do not value themselves because they did not grow up in a home that had a father figure in the home. Therefore, they didn't see something that they should wanna grow up and become. So since they didn't have that positive example, then they don't value anybody else. And this type of thing is going to continue to keep going forward as long as we continue to produce these babies outside of the social construct of wedlock. I don't think it's a perfect construct, but I do think it's a construct that worked for us. Let's see, uh, since America, since black people have been in America, since we've been able to legally get married, it seems like it's been a, a good thing for us to do. Now, I know a lot of other communities have problems like ours in a, in a manner of speaking, maybe not to this extent. But I think everybody watching across the world can use these stories and relate to them and they can use them to make their own communities better. Again, I want to show some respect and put some respect on this baby's name. Her name was, let me, let me get him off my screen. I don't want to see his face anymore. Let's see if I can get him off of my screen. Give me a moment. Matter of fact, let me give a shout out to the biological father, at least being seen and speaking out and saying something. That's definitely a good thing. Okay, but this baby deserved a chance and she didn't have a chance, especially living in Chicago. And guess what? The majority of the children in Chicago don't stand a damn chance right now. So do what you gotta do, get them up out of there. If you care that much, move, do something. Cause you got fools out here who look like, I don't know what he looks like. He looks like a, like a demon. He really truly looks like a demon. Real weird looking, real weird looking dude, man. I don't know. This type of thing has got to stop. Throw the book at him. Go get his friends and then go get his girlfriend. Lock all their asses up. This is your boy DJ Just J. We're the AFC where we advocate for our babies first. From my heart to yours. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to this story. That's the end of our stream. Peace.